Hey there, future calibration gurus. Welcome to the world where accuracy is king and precision is queen. Today, we're diving headfirst into the nitty gritty of calibration. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Think of it as fine tuning your tools to make sure they're singing the same tune. We're going to be knee deep in real world examples, the kind you'll encounter in labs and workshops every single day. Our trusty guides on this adventure, two big names, ISO, IEC 17025 2017 and NISD Handbook 150. They sound intimidating, but I promise we'll break them down into plain English. So grab your safety glasses, put on your thinking caps, and let's get this calibration party started. Remember, a well-calibrated tool is a happy tool, and a happy tool makes for a happy technician. All right, folks, before we even think about laying a finger on that shiny equipment, we got to do our due diligence. This ain't some amateur hour operation, we're professionals. First things first, channel your inner detective and review the equipment records. Think of it like checking the criminal record before you hire someone. You need to know its history, past calibrations, any issues, the whole nine yards. Next up, let's give our tools a little spa treatment. Cleanliness is next to godliness, especially in the calibration world. Dust, grime, fingerprints, they can all throw off your readings. So grab a lint-free cloth and some isopropyl alcohol, and let's get scrubbing. Now here's a little secret. Tools are like us. They need time to chill out after a workout. Let them acclimate to the environment before you start poking and prodding. This is called stabilization, and it's crucial for accurate readings. Finally, we gotta make sure our reference standards are on point. These are the gold standards, the top dogs, the ones we use to compare everything else against. And guess what? They need to be traceable to NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Think of it like a family tree for measurements, ensuring everything can be traced back to the ultimate authority. Okay, folks, it's showtime. We've prepped like pros. Now it's time to put our calibration skills to the test. Remember those SOPs, those standard operating procedures? Yeah, those are our Bible now. They tell us exactly what to do step by step to calibrate each piece of equipment, no winging it. Now we gotta channel our inner accountant and record everything. First we jot down the as-found measurements, this is like taking a before picture. Then we do our calibration magic and record the as-left measurements, the after picture if you will. But wait, there's more! We gotta make sure our measurements are consistent, how do we do that? With repeatability checks, baby. We repeat the same measurement multiple times to see how much they vary. Think of it like shooting hoops. You want those readings clustered together like a perfect swish. Once we're satisfied, it's time to slap a label on that bad boy. This label is like a badge of honor, proof that the equipment has been calibrated and is good to go. It should include all the important details, date of calibration, who did it, and the next calibration due date. All right, we've calibrated our hearts out. Now it's time to tie up those loose ends. First and foremost, we got to make sure those results are within tolerance. Remember those limits we talked about earlier? Yeah, our measurements need to fall within those boundaries. If they don't, we got a problem and we'll talk about that in a minute. Assuming everything looks good, we got to update the records. This could be a fancy digital system or good old fashioned pen and paper. Either way, we need to document everything. The as found and as left data, any adjustments we made, the whole shebang. Now let's give our newly calibrated tools a proper home. We don't want them getting banged around and thrown out of whack. Store them in a safe, clean and dry environment, away from any extreme temperatures or nasty chemicals. Finally, we gotta channel our inner superhero and report any out-of-tolerance findings. This is serious business, folks. Out-of-tolerance equipment can lead to inaccurate measurements, faulty products, and even dangerous situations. So, don't be afraid to speak up and let the right people know. Okay, team. It's time to talk about the elephant in the room out of tolerance findings. This isn't the time to panic, but it's definitely time to put on our serious faces. Remember those tolerances we talked about? They're not just suggestions. They're there for a reason. They tell us the acceptable range for our measurements, ensuring the equipment is accurate and reliable. So what happens when a measurement falls outside that range? It's like a giant red flag waving in our faces screaming, Houston, we have a problem. It means the equipment isn't performing as it should and we need to figure out why. First things first, double check everything. Did we follow the SOP to the letter? Did we use the correct reference standard? Did we accidentally bump the equipment while we were calibrating it? Sometimes the simplest explanation is the right one. If we've ruled out any user errors, it's time to investigate further. The equipment itself could be faulty. 
Maybe it's old and worn out or perhaps there's a damaged component. Whatever the reason, we need to take it out of service immediately. We don't want to be responsible for inaccurate measurements or worse, a safety hazard. Congratulations, my friends, you made it! You've officially earned your calibration stripes. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the importance of pre-calibration checks to the critical steps of post-calibration documentation. We've learned how to follow those all-important SOPs, how to spot an out-of-tolerance measurement from a mile away, and how to report any problems like the responsible technicians we are. Remember, calibration isn't just about following a set of rules, it's about understanding the why behind those rules. It's about taking pride in our work, knowing that we play a vital role in ensuring accuracy and reliability in everything we do. So go forth, my fellow calibration champions, and spread the gospel of accuracy. And remember, if you ever have any questions or need a refresher, don't hesitate to reach out. There's a whole community of calibration experts out there ready and willing to help. Now go out there and make those instruments sing. For more information and resources, check out the National Institute of Standards and Technology website.